Uh, big news, political news, is Buttigieg dropped out of the race uh, yesterday. I don't understand why. I mean, I do, but I don't understand why today. Why would you go through all of this, like, like a year of campaigning, and all the all this the travel, all the debates, and the, all the nonsense, and then not wait till I don't know tomorrow. <laughs> like just wait it out a day, and just do Super Tuesday, right? Just do it, and see what you do, right? If nothing else, just like I don't know, just see how well you do. I don't get it. I don't know why you wouldn't wait. I, I really have no insight. Does anyone have any insight into why you wouldn't just drop out Wednesday? Maybe money? I guess like my first thought is you don't have money, but like even if you can't run any ads, just just wait around. And you're not gonna run more ads in Bluebring anyways. Just wait till Wednesday. I don't get that. I don't understand what. I'd, like I'm I'm just genuinely curious. Like what like what's the calculus for that? Why uh, him sitting around with his advisors, his campaign advisors, deciding to pull the plug on Sunday? Um. But anyway, so the question is where it's all about second choice, second uh, second choices, everyone's second choice. So who is so if someone is a supporter of Buttigieg and he's out, who's their second choice? Well, actually, now that I think that maybe Sanders said, "Hey, you drop out now, I'll give you some sort of uh, campaign job or something, or I'll give you some sort of job in the White House or whatever." Maybe some, maybe that's there's some of that behind the scenes. Um, but it's all about second choice. So remember Lincoln? Abraham Lincoln was everybody's second choice. Uh, great book, obviously, Team of Rivals, super popular book from like a decade ago. Uh, Doris Kearns Goodwins. The beginning of the book, or some of the opening chapters of the book, run through the 1860 convention and how William Seward was the front runner. And the first round of voting went completely to Seward. He was in a commanding lead. But Lincoln's team was able to negotiate and convince every other candidate's supporters to go with him over Seward, right? So they're like, hey, you don't wanna, you don't wanna go for Seward. Like, your guy's not gonna win, but you don't wanna go for Seward, right? So go with Lincoln. And he was everybody's second choice. So Lincoln won on the third and actually technically the fourth uh, ballot uh, officially, right? So as these candidates' last few drop out, right? Elizabeth Warren, she's gotten third, fourth, fourth, and fifth in her first four primaries or caucuses, right? Four, that's, not, that's not good. Third, fourth, fourth, and fifth. So when she drops out, where do her five or six supporters go? Same thing with, with Klobuchar and now Bougez. So uh, my understanding is, based on whatever polls I was able to pull together to answer this question, and you know, we don't really know, but it looks like uh, <clears throat> Buttigieg uh, and Warren supporters have Sanders as their second choice. Biden supporters have Sanders as their second choice, but Bloomberg supporters, their second choice is Biden, which is weird. So, so I guess the, the moral of the story is Bloomberg and Biden are kind of splitting the vote. I, I think I said that wrong before. Biden sort of, Biden's second choices are Bloomberg. I apologize. Uh, let me try again. <laughs> Buttigieg and Warren, their second supporters are Sanders. Biden and Bloomberg, they go back and forth. Like, if you're a Boom Bloomberg supporter, your number two guy's Biden. If you're a Biden supporter, your number two guy's Bloomberg, right? So they, they're splitting the vote as these, let's just say, going into Super Tuesday, you really just have these three choices, right? Uh, you have three white guys between the ages of 77 and 78, okay? <laughs> right? So it's almost like these two, Biden, Biden and Bloomberg, are splitting their vote, leaving a bigger opening for Sanders. So everyone who leaves the race is going to be benefiting Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is very happy today that Buttigieg dropped out before Super Tuesday. By the way, quick little uh, fun Lincoln fact. Uh, last week was the 160th anniversary of, of Lincoln's Cooper Union speech. An amazing speech. Uh, you should go back and read it. It's fantastic. One of his best ever. It was the speech that he spent the longest time preparing. With that. But a reporter was there, and he said that uh, Lincoln was so tall, angular, and awkward that I had a feeling of pity for so ungainly a man. <laughs> Isn't that a great line? And then at the end of the speech, he ended up loving him because he was, he was, he was Abraham Lincoln. But don't forget that Abraham Lincoln was a, not a good-looking person at all and I believe would never be elected today. For the same reason that I always say James Madison, he was 5'4", he would never be elected today. Way too short. He's even shorter than Bloomberg. I mean, Bloomberg towers over the father of the Constitution. So I always say that's just a testament to how ridiculous our political system is today, that Abraham Lincoln and James Madison would just be like, brushed aside. You don't quite have the look, Mr. Lincoln. You're quite an ugly man. Uh, 
So I don't think anyone would vote for him. But I say that. Do we, guys, do we have the video of, uh, have you seen the video of Tom Steyer? Do we have Tom Steyer dancing? This is Tom. Yeah, so there's Tom Steyer on stage with circa 1999 rapper Juvenile singing uh, Back That Thang Up would be the tune. There you, there's your, there's Tom Steyer getting jiggy with it. Uh, so I, I, so I say I don't think anyone would vote for Lincoln today because he was such an ugly guy. But I'm also fairly certain that Lincoln wouldn't want to run for president today if that's what it requires in our idiocracy. Slater Crusaders, thanks for watching the first on YouTube. If you want more, like, subscribe. We got plenty.